Hi everyone, today we are going to test out a black peel-off mask by La Dream AM and the pore refining brush and mask tool from ELF. I purchased this bamboo charcoal peel-off mask off of Amazon and it was $12 for 60 grams of product. It's a decent sized tube, I would say. The e.l.f. mask tool comes with a silicone spatula-like applicator on one end and then on the other end it actually has kind of stiff-ish bristles to scrub off any mask at the end of application. I think this would be very useful for one of those thick masks. To start off, I'm going to take a towel, dip it in some hot water, wring off as much as I can and then apply it to my face to open up my pores. If you do do this, make sure to completely dry your face before you apply the mask because a mask will kind of just slip and slide over any thin film of water that might be left over your skin. So dry it off completely. Masks are there better to dry skin. I'm going to pour the mask over a plate to avoid accidents. You know, I'm pretty accident prone. And then apply it using the spatula side of the mask tool. This is a pretty thick, kind of gooey consistency mask. I'm going to start off by applying over my nose because this is the main reason why I purchased this mask. Usually when I use nose strips, I'm kind of dissatisfied with the way it wraps around my nostrils. My hope is that this does a better job in removing any whitehead blackheads that are kind of hidden underneath the nostril area. I have to say it wasn't very easy applying the mask with the tool because the tool is a little too soft and bendy and the mask is a little too thick and sticky. It was difficult to get into kind of these areas you know around my eyebrows with the tool and I was getting my hair stuck in it not that I don't get that when I'm using my fingers but yeah and I also noticed that if I put too much pressure with the tool I was thinning out the mask a little bit too much Eventually, I gave up and just, you know, finished up with my fingers. I really don't think that's a good idea because it was super difficult to get it off of my hands. Afterwards, it was very, um, it was very persistent, you can say. It had even gotten into the, into the little ridges that, you know, we have on the fingers and even that wasn't coming off. I'm glad I did not apply the whole mask with my hands. And then I waited. The recommended wait time is about 15 to 20 minutes as per the packaging. It took a good 30 plus minutes for the mask to dry completely. It dried to a kind of rough texture. I was expecting it to kind of dry very, very, you know, smooth and shiny. It was kind of hard to find a starting point for the peeling process. The mask had gotten thinned out towards the edges and that made it dry super thin. If you notice the part of the mask that dried on the plate, I couldn't really get it off at all. <laughs> I mean, I couldn't peel it at all. I could only get it off by washing it. And then I did find the edge. I'm laughing now because... After all that pain and ripping, I was actually expecting to see a little bit more of whiteheads and dry skin on the peeled off mask, but you know, there wasn't much.
Even on the patch of mask from the nose area, I could predominantly see the peach fuzz. Then I couldn't find as many white heads as I usually find on a nose strip. But I have to say it was, you know, way easier to peel off the mask from the nose than from the cheeks. And the more I moved away from the center of my face, the more painful it got as I have more hair on the periphery of my face than in the middle. Yep, didn't find much on this patch either. Beauty is pain. Whoever said that, I want to kill that person. The last few leftover patches near the edges took a lot of time and effort to get removed. My skin did feel soft. Well, it felt like it had been waxed. The area under my chin, no, I just, you know, it was not possible. I decided to give up on it and I just wiped my face clean with the damp cloth to get rid of any leftover residue of the mask. So overall, if you are into the market for a good face wax, I would say give this one a try. I am going to continue using this one, but I think I will stick to using it only on my nose, forehead, and chin where my skin is kind of naturally taut. I would stay away from any of the areas that have peach fuzz on them. If you're giving it a try, definitely keep it away from your eyebrows. It will definitely rip them off. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to give it a like, subscribe, and thanks again for watching. Bye!